All right, let's move on to uh, the <coughs> SEC, a couple of battles, uh, Pac-12, a couple of battles coming up this weekend. <coughs> Before we do, uh, if you want to get free plays every day, just go to jimwins.com. If you want to get free plays on a recorded message, you can just call 1-855-737-5367. All right, Pac-12 action out west. Let's start with this UCLA battle against Arizona. Pac-12 showdown. Both uh, have off to very good starts here. Pac-12 opener as well. UCLA opened a three-point favorite here on the road. We've even seen some up action up to three and a half. UCLA, a lot of talent, but they do have a new quarterback, a freshman in Josh Rosen. He has... Chosen Rosen. That's right. That's the guy. <laughs> five touchdowns on the season, but four interceptions. So a uh, freshman is looking uh, like a youngster at times. He does have help, though, on a balanced offense with Paul Perkins, who just a, was a beast last year and has really took control uh, last week. Or they beat BYU. They had a lot of yards, 402, but they gave up 405 and a 24 to 23 squeaker. And Ross Rosen, hey, looked uh, looked a little bit uh, shaky here, which uh, is looked good in the first game, but the second game, no. Well, no, Saturday uh, he was shaky, three picks in the first half. And so, Sean, I'm wondering here, should this team uh, be a road chalk with a, a freshman quarterback like this? Well, you know, <clears throat> you know what I look for. I mean, this is kind of basic, simple stuff. You're right. A UCLA, a road favorite of three against Arizona. UCLA, traditionally, not a good point spread team anywhere in any role. They're 6-10 and ten against the number the last 16 games anywhere. They're 1-2 and two against the number this year. And this BYU team, which was kind of like maybe the Auburn of a few years ago where they just pulled off stuff in the, in the, in the end, they had to outscore UCLA now. This, they're a favorite of 16 and a half at home, and they had to outscore BYU in the fourth quarter, 14 to 6, just to win the game by one point. So they're lucky to get the win. The reason they're favorite, however, is because you're 3-0 and straight up and against the number versus Arizona the last three years that they played them, which is why they are favorite here. So there's a lot of noise about this freshman quarterback, Josh Rosen, the chosen Rosen thing, but he's, fought, like you said, John, five touchdown passes with four interceptions. I don't think those numbers are anything to write home about. And UCLA traditionally does not play defense anyway. I don't know what the total on this game is going to be, but it's going to be, I'm sure, in the mid to high 50s. If I had to take a side gun to my head, I probably would lean to UCLA, win this by maybe seven, but there's going to be a lot of points scored in this game. No D on the part of a UCLA. And I, I think this kid has got a lot of talent. He's a freshman, and maybe as you know, as the season goes on, he'll put up some pretty good numbers. And the other thing that keeps me off Arizona is the fact, when was the last time Arizona had a quarterback that anybody even remembered in the last 25 years? So gun to my head, I'm going to say UCLA probably by seven in a high-scoring game. All right, and uh, Arizona also 3-0, and but really, what do we know about these Wildcats? They're totally untested on the season. I guess you have to go back, really, to look at how they did last year, and a lot of that top talent from that 10-win team a year ago is back. Sophomore quarterback Anu Solomon has 10 touchdowns and no picks last year against the tougher competition. He was still very good, 28 touchdowns, 9 picks. You get the junior running back Nick Wilson back, and he's got terrific senior wide receivers and Caleb Jones and Johnny Jackson. So, uh, Jeff... You know, here's a team that uh, coming off a 10-win season, but they are a home underdog. You think that's uh, correct? <clears throat> yeah, it's just, I think the line is just about right. Uh, the thing about UCLA is every year, every year they're never in the national title chase because they always manage to lose the game they should win, and then they lose to Oregon. And this year, that, that's why this game against BYU, even though they're, they lo they barely covered, barely won the game as a big favorite, I think it's a huge win confidence-wise because this is a game that they, they won it, and now they don't have to play Oregon this year. So this, it, it might be a good springboard for the rest of the season as, as they go into the conference. Uh, luckily, uh, Chosen Rosen was very shaky, just as he was against UNLV in the first half. He was throwing deep balls and wasn't doing much, and then he started throwing shorter passes and, and had better success. But uh, going on the road for another game, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it could be uh, a little iffy here. They were, uh, that's funny, the BYU once again was in the head of fourth down, and, after the, and Tanner Magnum once again had a chance to pull the game out, but instead of throwing his patented high miracle, percentage, he'll miracle miracle thing, right? threw a regular yeah. pass instead, <laughs> and he got intercepted by Miles Jack and, yeah. and sealed the win for the Bruins. So uh, uh, even though Rosen had a, had a, didn't have a great game, the, fortunately the, the running game uh, picked up. They had almost had almost 300 yards on the ground. 
Uh, Arizona's averaging 54 points a game, so uh, I know they haven't played hardly anybody. Yeah, against who? Home favorite of how much? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, they beat Northern Arizona 77-13. Yeah, so. uh, but that, they covered the game. Yeah, yeah they covered, yeah. Uh, that's more you can say from a lot of these other teams. Yeah. Uh, they just broke the school record for points and, and 20 yards. I know Salomon was 25 or 35, 285 yards, four TDs. Uh, even though we only played a little bit, a little more than half the game. Uh, UCLA is one of the last three meetings of Rich Rod's 0-1-3 against the Bruins. And so, uh, and remember in 2012, UCLA won 66 to 10. So, uh, I, I would, this is another game. All, all these games we're doing today are not going to be big plays yeah, to me. Yeah. But UCLA would probably be the way to go here, but it, it won't be a big play, John. Just a couple of things. That, uh, this is just thought process stuff. Now, you got Southern Cal, first of all, has lost the ball game already. And they were picked to win this division, and then UCLA generally was number two. So now you have a team, UCLA. These two teams will play at the end of the season, UCLA and Southern Cal. So, I mean, this is UCLA's chance to get up on this USC team, who they do have to play. I don't can't remember who's going to be the home team in that thing. <coughs> but now you have an opportunity just win the game. It doesn't mean they're going to cover three points, but it's a short number. So UCLA, this is a big game, I think, for UCLA. they got every reason to show up. I just don't think they have the defense to blow this team out. But it's only a three-point line. I think they have more of a reason to play than, like I said, than Arizona does. And Arizona has been a home dog five times in the last few. Home dog five times. They're just two and three straight up and against a number in that role. So they're not great there either. So it sounds like I'm kind of inching my way toward UCLA here. I might even throw a few shekels on it, but they got every reason to show up here. They got enough talent. They should be able to get it done. Like I said, Arizona's not exactly a quarterback factory, but boy, if you're going to try and get up on USC, which has to be their thought process, and do it now. Uh, this would be the game to win. So, all right, we got two votes for UCLA, and guess what? I'm going to go in the other direction. I uh -oh. like Arizona in this one, home underdog. I like the what Rich Rodriguez has done here. I like the returning talent with Solomon, and it is a revenge spot. I'm not really big on revenge. You look at last year's game, UCLA really dominated, 17 to seven final, but they had a whopping edge in yards, 460 to 255. They were 10 of 21 on third down, but that was with Brett Hundley, and he's gone. So now they have the freshman quarterback going out on the road. Just don't know how he's going to perform in the hostile environment. As you guys mentioned, five touchdowns, four picks. And yeah, well, Maybe he does have talent, but he's still uh, very untested here. So I do have concerns with him in addition to how they played against BYU the other day. And then when you look at the, the matchup between these teams, the rivalry, the home team is dominated as far as the spread is concerned, nine and three against the spread. When UCLA comes to Arizona, just not getting it done, one and five against the spread, so kind of like the uh, home dog here. All right, let's take a look at the uh, another Pac-12 game. It's USC heading also to that same state, but this time they'll be playing Arizona State, first road game for USC, and yet they're a five-and-a-half point road favorite here. And as you mentioned already, uh, one loss, and that was the big one uh, against Stanford on Saturday. USC is just loaded uh, on both sides of the ball. Cody Kessler, probably uh, the best quarterback in the country. And uh, the, he wasn't the problem against Stanford. <laughs> he put up plenty of yards and was terrific. However, the defense was terrible, giving up 41 points. Stanford was 8 of 12 on third down and uh, gave up, what, the 474 yards Stanford had after getting shut down in their other They just game. ambushed him. They just they ambushed him. They sure did. They, they did everything ambushed. right. Uh, so, Sean, I can't blame Kessel in this one. I have to blame other defense. How do you see it? Well, first of all, Southern Cal, right? Big upset loss. We talked about home favorite nine and a half. It was ten, nine and a half, and then ten actually went down to nine. So the money went on the dog pretty much. It closed at nine and a half. And USC, here, here's some numbers here. USC seven and four straight up, but three and eight against the number as a road favorite. The last eleven times they have been in that situation, but. Two of those three straight-up wins and covers have come when they're coming off a straight-up loss. This team bounces back pretty good. Now, this is the first road game for Southern Cal. Arizona State, here's the thing that's scary, right? They haven't covered in their last five games out. They haven't covered a game yet this year. They played three, and they didn't cover the last two they played last year. And, and they were manhandled in the fourth quarter by Texas A&M. I don't know if you remember that first game when they played A&M. Yeah. Kind of close for a while. And a lot of people thought Arizona State was, I think it was plus about two and a half, Jeff, sound right? Had a really good chance to win this game, but they just ran out of poop in that Texas A&M defense. So, uh, you know, Arizona State has won the last two straight up versus Southern Cal. This is a tough call. But Arizona State is simply not covering numbers. And I, I find it hard to believe that Southern Cal, this is a reasonably short number. And like you said, John, they're loaded, even though they didn't look that good last week. I think, I think Southern Cal will win this by about two touchdowns. So for me, it would be USC minus the five. Well, uh, they are terrific in a bounce-back role. Yeah. After a spread loss, yeah. you, you see uh, USC is 25-9 and 
against the spread. Arizona State got coach Todd Graham, plenty of offensive talent returning from a team that won 10 games a year ago. However, uh, it's been an untested team other than the opener against an SEC team, and boy, did they look bad getting ro mm. routed by Texas A&M 38-17. to They gave up 425 yards on defense, and they only had 291. Well, they got beat up in the fourth quarter really bad. I mean, I, they just ran them out of town after that. So depth Plus, I hear Jake Plummer's not going to play. <laughs> come on, no, nobody remembers Jake Plummer? Jake? Not the snake, of course. Come on, you guys are really – come on, I'm throwing them out there. You're not – you know, you're not – I'm throwing <laughs> Swinging everything. Swinging them. Is. I'm lobbing them in there. You're not hitting them. That's because you're Bob Feller. What are you throwing, yeah, 99? Bob, I remember Bob Feller real good. And the thing about the Sun Devils is a lot of injuries, too. They've had injuries yeah. uh, on both sides of the ball. So, Jeff, you know, what, am, what do you make of this ailing Sun Devils team? Well, the one good thing is they finally – the reason they, they, they looked so bad against A&M, they came out with a, a predictable conservative offense for some reason. And uh, as I said in one of the other shows, that they were scared to death of the downfield. So all the A&M defense had to do was concentrate on these little short passes, and, and that was it. And, Just flat them at the line. Yeah, yeah. And, but the, in this past game, though, uh, Brickovici started running the ball. They, uh, instead of uh, – uh, they, they actually and had I run an better than he does. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> what you're wanting At to least say. it gave yeah. the defense uh, uh, something and one other thing to think about. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, so that might be an improvement. And also, uh, and, and when the defense has other things to think about, because Brickovici had another chance to throw downfield. Mm -hmm. So that's one good thing in the Sun Devils' favor. And also, Demario Richard just tore up 255 off-purpose yards on Saturday. Uh, but they do have those ton of injuries. So. That's a tough one. SC goes on the road for the first time, and of course, the first two they they play Arkansas State and Idaho, and then they got beat by Stanford. They don't look so. It's hard to take them right now, laying points. Uh, last season on the road, Arizona State won 38-34 in 2013. They won 62 to 41. Uh, Kessler, of course, looks good. That's no problem. 272 yards on Saturday, three TDs. Uh, obviously, they couldn't stop the Cardinal. The Stanford's offense is on the field like they are. And that's one of their trademarks. They're, they they use a lot of uh, time of possession, uh, and SC kept shooting themselves in the foot with the eight penalties. So, uh, I, I'm not crazy about taking SC here, laying points on the road. I would lean toward Arizona State, even though it's once again like the other two places. It's not going to be. It's not, not going to be a big play. <laughs> so this will be at the top of your package. <laughs> Nothing like right? taking yeah. a stand. Yeah. Uh, are you are you implying that Todd Graham is uh, like Chip Kelly in your coaching hierarchy? Not that bad yet, but he's getting. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, one thing, his son, uh, was it Bo Graham? He, he, he resigned. He was forced to resign before the first week. He was a running backs coach. I'm not sure if that had anything to do with it. But, uh, but they just haven't been, they haven't been running offense the whole season. Well, I'm going to take a look uh, at the total here because these teams have been <laughs> loving them totals. Today, I do. Ain't you, right? They have not been playing any defense uh, up against each other. First of all, look at USC last week. They're at home. They give up 41 points to a Stanford team that had scored six points in their only other road game. And then you look at the last two meetings the last two years, 38-34 final, 62-41 to two years ago final, and that uh, Arizona State, when they face a team with a winning record, they're 21-10 and over the total. I have some doubts about the defenses on both sides, and plus head-to-head -head matchup, 6-2 and two over the total. That's how I'll look at this one. So right. wait a minute, does this mean Northwestern will win the national title? That is a definite they, they thought. They held Stanford to six points. They, hey, maybe why not? Because Why not? Shades of what, 93 or 4, whenever it was, when they went to the Rose Bowl and oh, almost Gary, beat something yeah, Gary Bennett. Turned, yeah, Gary, right. Turned the Gary Barnett yeah. or whatever his name was. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That was a miraculous yeah. uh, team. Had. You never know. All right, let's get to some uh, best bets, guys, for the weekend. Uh, Jeff, you have a special coming up, <coughs> plus you got a best bet. Well, does, I hope my best bet does have to be one of these games. But. It'll be anything <laughs> on the board. It'll be off the board. If okay, you let's go with Oklahoma State for the best bet on, on Saturday. Um, well, last week my, I had my advertisement was um, – you're going to get a $500 play, which is a blockbuster. You're going to get for only 25 bucks. The play was the Steelers. It was one of the best, easiest plays of the year. That's, so all of you that called got a $500 value for only 25 bucks, and you got an easy win. That was the perfect spot for the Steelers. It, uh, they actually had four days, four more days rest than the, than, than the Niners. Uh, Steelers coming off a loss. You know they're going to be focused. The Niners coming off a win, a late Monday night game. And the Steelers have a better team at home. So it was just pretty, pretty much a perfect storm, and that's why I have blockbusters. That, and that's why... Um, uh, so you won with only you won a five dollar value with only twenty five dollars. So this week we're going to give you two weeks of college and pro football uh, at LVSS. It's, it's just call the number on your screen. You got two weeks, twenty five bucks. It's going to be college football, NFL, everything, twenty five bucks. Just call the number of your screen and ask for LVSS. You think that win was easier than the Patriot win? And the <laughs> oh yeah. Win? Come on, Jeff. Oh, uh, didn't have to even do any research. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Forty-three to eighteen. You're gonna, yeah. you're gonna find. Well, Jeez, I didn't do much research on the Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> it was so obvious. It just jumped him. <laughs> well, if the Patriots had blown that lead, Sean, it wouldn't have been such an easy. Oh boy. I was afraid it was gonna go to seven and a half or eight, but it didn't. So. 
Well, for me, the best play is, uh, and it's just a, a game that leaped out on me. I mean, here we got a team that scored six points in week one and then upset USC. And Stanford's on the road on Friday, a 16-point favorite to Oregon State. Now, Oregon State, nothing to write home about, but I, this is a flat spot, I think, for this team. All I got to do is just win the game. So for me, Friday, it's a Friday evening game. I think it's on Fox. Take Oregon State plus the 16. Some early money. And yeah. now when the Patriots were blowing that 37-13 lead, were you there was ready to burn the ticket? I called them up and said, lighten up a little bit. Because well, yeah, I said you guys would win by eight, and they didn't. You know, so. Now that's what I call inside yeah. info. All right, I'm going to go for our best bet uh, to the NF NFL. We'll do the Steelers-Rams game being played indoors. Yes, I like it over the total because that Pittsburgh offense they're just incredible with Big Ben passing, but I have major concerns about the defense, which is still uh, very weak. So. so you're looking at 47? Uh, I'm looking 47. at uh, much higher. Both teams get about 30 points. I'm saying, but the number's 47. You're yeah. looking for them to go over that? Yeah. All right. Because well, no, I'm going to mark you down for this. I'm just letting you know. You can do that. All right. You can mark it right here. Okay. All right, well, uh, thanks for joining us, everyone, for the college football version of ProLine. Good luck with the games, everyone. And we'll see you next week with another edition. Da, 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 da.